Hello students, in this session, let us know about statistics. Okay. First, what is statistics? Okay. We all have a misconception that statistics is nothing but finding mean, median and mode, etc. But statistics is much more than that. Let us see what is statistics. See here, statistics is a branch of mathematics which deals with number one collection representation analyzation or interpretation of data okay collection how the data is collected see data is collected in many ways like interviews observation or from uh, old records observation conducting meetings and so on okay Next, representation. After collecting the data, the second part is the presenting the data in the form of tables or graphs, whatever it may be. Next, analyzation. What is analyzation here? Analyzation is nothing but you have to study the data in order to get result. Okay? So, let us see what are the parts in statistics or what are the fundamental concepts of statistics. Okay? First, let us know what is data. Here, a data is nothing but a collection of raw facts. What it is? Collection of raw facts. Okay. Here, raw facts are nothing but truths. Okay. But in general, numerical figures, you call it what it is? Numerical figures, which are collected through observations or surveys, etc. is called as data. Example, see here, we can see, we can tell example from our daily life means it is census and marks. Okay. Census. What is census? Census is nothing but study of population. Okay. Next, marks. After a particular class marks, we are representing in the form of a table. Okay. These are the examples of data. Okay. Next. In this, first, let us know what is a variable. Okay. A variable is a fundamental unit of statistics. Okay. And what it is, let us see. A variable a quantity which can change it from one individual to another is called a variable. What it is? A quantity which can change from one individual to another. Which can change. Example, see here. Height, weight, etc. Okay. Height. It changes from each and every individual, right? In the same way, weight also. Next. How many types of variables are there? Variables is nothing but it is divided into two types. Continuous and discrete variable okay let us see what is continuous variable and what is discrete variable continuous variable see a continuous variable is nothing but it can take all numerical values here all numerical values is nothing but it can take numbers as well as decimals okay next example height weight distance measure of rainfall how they are continuous variables see if you take height it can be represented in the form of points like this, right? 4.2, 4.4, 4. so on up to like this. Okay, in the same way, height. You can represent in the form of point 40.8 kgs, 50.6 kgs, like that, and so on. Okay, next. What is discrete variable? Okay, discrete variable, it cannot take all the values. Here, see, continuous means it can take all values, including decimals, but a discrete means it cannot take all values, nothing but only natural numbers. What they are examples, number of children, number of patients equal like that. We cannot count in points, right? So, this is a discrete variable. Clear? Next, let us see what is raw data. Okay? A raw data is also known as primary data. What it is? Raw data is known as primary data. Is data collected from a source. Source is nothing but from any, uh, well, if you want to study about students, students will be the source. Okay. Or else, if I want to study about the patient, any disease, the disease patients will be the source. Like that. Okay. Next. This also, I can tell it as raw data refers to any data object that has not undergone through processing. Okay. This is one more difference. Nothing but the data which is not processed is called raw data. Here, processing is nothing but which didn't undergone study. Okay. Next, 
simply this can be tell as recorded data which is collected from the source is known as raw data okay next examples here i am writing marks obtained by 15 students in a test are as follows i am writing the marks okay wait see here the marks will be like this 12 13 11 15 19 13 but here it see if you see this these are not arranged or i am writing it as it is i am collecting from the students okay so this is called raw data now let us see what is array data array data is nothing but if a raw data is arranged in ascending or descending order then it is called as array data nothing but i am taking a raw data suppose the previous data i am taking and if i want to write it is it has array data okay i have to write in ascending order like this or descending order descending order is the reverse of ascending order okay so these two data you can call it as array data and let us see what is the frequency you learned in either eighth class frequency is nothing but the number of times a particular observation appears in the given data okay suppose for example in this example the frequency of 11 is 2 why 11 is repeated two times so the frequency of 11 is 2 okay next let us see representation of data okay what is representation how many ways you can represent that is nothing but after collecting the data we have to represent the data so it can be done in two ways one is tabular representation and graphical representation tabular is nothing but in the form of tables like this and graphical means you can represent with the help of graphs okay next let us know let us learn about tabular representation first okay here tabular representation the tables which we use we are we call them as frequency distribution tables and here the table see what is frequency distribution table like definition the table showing data with their corresponding frequencies is called frequency distribution table nothing but observation with corresponding frequencies like this suppose these are observations tally marks and their frequencies or else it can be like this also observation and frequency okay and one more way of representing by using tables see here we have only observations here Cla this they are these are classes we call it as class intervals and frequency this is also frequency distribution table one more way here if you see 19 to 29 29 to 34 both are 29 and 29 are same but we can write in another way 13 to 22 23 to 22 see here these two are different okay this type let us see what are all these tables okay how to change or else let us see what they are first the tabular representation of data frequency you call the you call the tables as frequency distribution table and they are divided into two types what they are ungrouped frequency distribution and grouped frequency ungrouped is nothing but you write observations and frequencies okay only observations will be there it they are not grouped whereas in grouped frequency distribution the observations are grouped in the form of classes like this 19 to 29 29 to 34 and so on okay here these are called class intervals suppose let us take the class interval 19 to 29 in this what is what here 19 is called lower limit and 29 is called upper limit of the class okay now let us see in group distribution what they are I told you right to two there are two types one is inclusive and exclusive what is inclusive see here here 150 to 154 is the first class interval and 154 to 159 is the second class interval and in this if you see 154 is the upper limit of the first class and 155 is the upper limit of the second class those two are different okay and whereas in exclusive classes upper limit of the first class and lower limit of the next class are equal then this is exclusive this is inclusive okay and what is inclusive and exclusive how you can change inclusive to exclusive the process of changing inclusive classes to exclusive classes we call it as adjustment okay consider these tables this is inclusive or exclusive all are same so this is exclusive why it is exclusive see here 
here the observation 29 is nothing but upper limit of the first class is equal to the lower limit of the next class and the upper limit of the first class 29 is not included it is excluded in the first class okay and it is included in the second class so as it is excluded we call it as exclusive class whereas here see these classes 150 to 154 see i am showing 154 here and here it is 155 both are different and this 154 included in the same class whereas if you see everything 164 169 174 179 everything they are included in the same class whereas here the upper limits are not included in the particular class they will be included in the next class so here they are called exclusive this is inclusive class how to convert let us see consider the table Okay, first, here this is inclusive series, right? 5 to 9, 10 to 14, 15 to 19 and so on. So, what we have to do mean? First, find the difference between 9 to 10. What it is? 1. So, divided by 2. 1 by 2. So, what we will get? 0 0.5, right? So, after finding the difference, we have to subtract to the lower limit and we have to add to the upper limit. What we will get? 5 minus 0 0.5. 9 plus 0 0.5 nothing but 4.5 to 9.5 in the same way for each and every class we have to subtract to the lower limit and we have to add the result to the upper limit okay then you will get exclusive class intervals okay this inclusive is converted to exclusive classes okay next let us see this one what are the steps for the adjustment step one see find the difference between upper limit of first class and lower limit of the next class okay and then what you have to do half the result that is nothing but if the difference is one you have to find its half one by two and subtract the result to all the lower limits and add the result to all upper limits the required exclusive intervals or actual limits this is limits okay actual limits are formed okay this is the process of adjustment okay adjustment is nothing but we are converting inclusive classes to exclusive classes okay next let us see this what is class size okay here the difference between actual lower limit and actual upper limit you have to keep it in mind actual upper limit actual lower limit okay what are actual upper limits and actual lower limits after converting inclusive to exclusive the limits obtained are called actual lower limit and actual upper limits are called upper limits okay see for example these are inclu inclusive classes or exclusive classes they are exclusive so all are actual limits only so here the class size is 10 minus 0 okay so it is 10 everything you can take any class like 10 minus 0 20 minus 10 30 minus 20 you can take any ta any class the class size will be same okay and next if the classes are inclusive, what you have to do? You have to find the actual limits, then you have to find classes. Actual limits means you have to adjust the classes and then you have to find the class size. Whereas, what is class marks? Already learned today the class. Class marks are nothing but mid value of the particular class. Okay. So, let us see how to find. It is the mid value of the class. We obtain it by dividing the sum of the limits by 2. You have to add the limits and you have to divide it by 2. Suppose for these classes, 0 plus 10 by 2. Uh, if you take this class 10 to 20, what is the class marks? 10 plus 20 by 2. Nothing but 30 by 2 it is 15. Mid 15 is the mid value or 15 is the class marks for this class. Clear? Next. The last concept, cumulative frequency. Okay. What is cumulative frequency? Cumulative frequency of a class interval is sum of the frequencies of all classes up to that class. Okay, you have to add all frequencies up to that particular class. See, I am taking this table. Suppose this is a table. I have to find cumulative frequency for this distribution. Means what I have to do? I have to add. First one is 3. So it is 3 only. For the second class, I have to add 3 and 5. For the third class, I have to add 3, 5, 9 and so on like this so here these are called the cumulative frequencies what cumulative frequencies tell okay as we know frequency is nothing but it can tell how many observations are suppose if i am taking the first class 172 to 180 
the frequency is 3 nothing but in from 172 to 180 there are three observations like that right in the same way cumulative frequencies tell how many observations are there below particular upper limit of that class suppose here if i take this class 145 to 153 the cumulative frequency of this class is how much 29 so what this 29 is nothing but there are 29 observations which are less than 153 in this particular data clear cumulative frequency tells there how many number of observations are less than of that particular upper limit okay next take this example one more example you can write like this also see how to find cumulative frequency easily see here first to free cumulative frequency will get as it is next 1 plus 2 will get 3 3 plus 4 7 7 plus 0 7 7 plus 3 10 10 plus 5 15 15 plus 6 21 as here you added all these previous classes so we have to add just that cumulative frequency to the next frequency you will get cumulative frequency okay finally let us see this table okay this is the table 0 to 2 20 3 to 5 14 this you can write in one more way instead of class intervals you can write like this less than 3 first class is less than 3 so less than 3 is cumulative frequency is 20 less than 6 you have to add 20 and 14 so 34 less than 9 it is 49 less than 20 you can write like this also okay see this one last less here in general you have two types of cumulative frequency less than cumulative frequency and more than cumulative frequency but here in your ninth class you will be having only less than cumulative frequency whenever they they ask they tell cumulative frequency is nothing but less than cumulative frequency only you have to add from the above okay what is let us see, just keep it in mind what is more than cumulative frequency means you have to come from the down okay you have to add reverse 15 15 plus 27 27 plus 32 32 plus like this you have to add from reverse you will get more than cumulative what more than cumulative tells means how many observations are there above the lower limit of a class okay clear by this you have learnt about tabular representation of the data okay